Welcome to the Brain Tap Podcast, here to help you relax, reboot, and strengthen your overworked brain. Your host, Dr. Patrick Porter, is the developer of the Brain Tap Pro mobile app, designed to help you sleep better, lose weight, de stress, or kick a bad habit, all while increasing energy, focus, peak performance, and more. Take the free Brain Tap Pro Challenge. Simply register at braintap.pro. That's braintap.pro. On the Brain Tap Podcast, Dr. Porter brings together a team of experts to share up to the minute news in neuroscience, brain training technology, along with how mindfulness and meditation can be used to improve your life in ways you never imagined possible. And now, here's your host, Dr. Patrick Porter. Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Porter, and again, welcome back to Brain Tap Radio. Today, we have a very special guest in the connection between the body and the brain and the mind and how it affects your life. And, and we found out about him through his website, beatingsugaraddiction.com. And we're going to talk a lot about it. So Dan Fizio, I want to invite you to the podcast and tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what we can expect to learn through this podcast today. Well, thanks for asking me to come on, Patrick. It's an honor to be on the show. Uh, a little bit about me and my work. I basically work with sugar addicts and stress eaters. That's my primary focus. I help people uh, get back to a normal, healthy, sensible, sustainable eating plan. That's great. That sounds very simple, but uh, I know it's very complex because people get what they rehearse in life, not always what they intend. So tell us a little bit about how you did this and how you did it first for yourself, I guess, because you, you helped yourself first and found the, the path of action to take. Yeah, actually, you know, my own personal story is just a little bit different. I tend to uh, have problems with like overeating in general. I'm a portions control uh, issue guy as opposed to having a real sweet tooth. But the basic idea is the same. You know, when you talk about mindset for healthy eating, you really have to start steering yourself towards reality checks about how your brain is actually working and what you're thinking and how you relate to food. So the way that I got into this line of work was really more out of necessity than it was out of a strong desire. I got into exercise and nutrition in 1993. So I've been at it for a while and it became clear to me very early on that stress eating and sugar addiction, you know, carb addiction, that kind of stuff was a real problem for a lot of people. So I started working with folks in some systems and some ways to think about their relationship to food. And I kind of got, you know, a little bit of a system together and I, I write a lot and I do a lot of interviews like this. So over time, the uh, people who publish the, the dummies books, you know, Wiley is the company that does dummies books and they contacted me and they said hey we love your stuff we want you to do a book for us so that is how beating sugar addiction for dummies was born right i think everybody out there has probably heard of the dummy book so if they like this interview they should go out and get that book and learn a little bit more about you because you probably summarized it in there made it very simple everyone you, needs at least two copies yes there you go that's good i, I do believe so because there's sugar and everything i mean there, we could we could probably do a whole weekend seminar about how bad sugar is for you but tell me a little bit about uh when you're working with someone and how do you take these simple concepts you have and get them into their mindset so that they can start using it what kind of methodology do you use to get them to to activate their, their brain, if you will? Yeah, that's a really good question, Patrick. So the big picture, and I'll start at sort of the 30,000 foot view for this kind of stuff for anybody who is, who is interested, who's listening. Um, when you talk about stress eating or sugar addiction or any kind of addiction, really, any sort of reactive behavior, what you're really doing is using something as a substitute for something else. That's the real big picture here. So a lot of times when I work with people who have problems with stress eating or sugar addiction, what is actually happening for them is they have habituated themselves to reaching for food when they're actually seeking something else. So a real quick, uh, you know, sort of psychology 101 on this sort of mindset is that let's take a real typical example. Let's say 
we've got a person who is uh, stress eating because they're, they're wore out at work, right? Their work is stressful, they're on deadlines, their boss is breathing down their neck, they're having a terrible time, and so they reach for the cookies. Mm -hmm. What has happened in this person's mind is that he or she has built this incorrect association or assumption that the cookies are going to give them what they want. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I do when I work with folks is I start to try to give them a reality check on, all right, what is happening here and what is it that you actually want? So in the example that we just had, let's say you're all stressed out at work, what you're probably seeking in reality is some sort of peacefulness or a feeling of control. Well, I got news, cookies will not give you peacefulness or a sense of control, right? Mm -hmm. And so once you get into the mindset of, oh, what I'm really looking for here is this particular uh, state of mind or particular emotional state, then you can start breaking the automatic assumption, the faulty assumption that junk food is going to give me that feeling. Does that make sense? It does. Now, out of when you're working with these people, especially with weight, I know that some people just associate getting rid of sugar with being on a diet. What's your thoughts about that and why that, that's faulty thinking or is that the, the way to think? Tell me a little bit about that. I don't like to use the word diet unless I use it in the term of like how you feed yourself most of the time, like your diet in I'll put it in air quotes, your diet, mm. <laughs> but going on a diet by, by definition is going to be a temporary thing. And that generally never works well for folks. I take the opposite approach. Um, I try to work for what can we do to improve what you usually do? Because anybody can power through some sort of diet, some sort of temporary thing, whether it's a smart plan, you know, there are sensible smart eating plans out there and there's also a lot of garbage out there. So you gotta, gotta be careful. But regardless of whether it is a smart plan or a foolish plan, uh, in your brain, if it's a diet, it's not what you usually do, it's this temporary thing. So you pick a thing and you go on a thing whatever that is, and then maybe it works well for you and maybe it doesn't, but the end result is you're gonna eventually go off the thing and then you go back to what you usually do. Mm -hmm. So the end result there is you haven't really changed anything. So to answer your question, Patrick, the way that I take uh, my clients is I say, all right, here's what you have been doing normally up until now. Let's start to change little by little using baby steps that are sustainable and manageable, let's change what you usually do so that five months or six months from now, what is normal for you is way better, but it doesn't feel like you're doing that much differently because it doesn't seem like you're doing anything special. Well, that's great. Now, these kind of tips like this, are these things that they could find at beatingsugaraddiction.com or tell us a little bit about the site and what, what somebody could learn if they go to that site and, and start poking around? Well, thank you for the plug. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah. yes, I think everyone should definitely poke around beatingsugaraddiction.com. That's sort of my headquarters for uh, sugar addiction and stress eating information. So I post a lot of uh, articles. Uh, I put a lot of interviews on that website. I also have some free giveaways for folks. I've got uh, guidebooks right now for how to stop stress eating. There are uh, steps to start to wean yourself off of sugar. There's a lot of stuff that is available there information wise and, and tips wise if someone is interested in improving their eating little by little. When you think about all this you've amassed, put together the book, especially like with the dummies book and all that, what do you, with all your research and your life skills, what do you wish you knew now? Or if you could take this knowledge back in time, what piece of information would you like to take back in time and, and change up how Dan lived his life up to the point of knowing that knowledge? What's, what's wow. some unique piece of information? That is a big question. Um, I think something that I am learning, you know, as I continue to do this, I'm always learning, even though I've been at it for 25 years now. Um, I think the biggest surprise as I started to get into working with folks who are struggling with this stuff 
is how, what's a, what's a good way to describe this? How sort of rattled and off the rails folks can get when they are feeling out of control and overwhelmed. Um, and that's just because my brain doesn't work quite that way. I tend to be a little bit more uh, of sort of a, a rationalist. And so I do a lot of, like a reality check comes very naturally to me. And so maybe that's why I, I have been a successful coach for these folks. But what was surprising to me is um, how easy it is for folks to have, you know, one or two situations that come up that are either stressful or difficult or create some trouble. And that starts this cascade of a complete train wreck sometimes for months. And so that was really surprising to me. And so uh, to get back to how you asked the original question, you know, what do I wish that I knew? I wish I understood that earlier so that I think I could have uh, helped people faster and better earlier in my career. Now that I get a sense of that's how a lot of folks' minds work, um, I could put myself in that, in that mindset and be in that place uh, with them. And I've got some tools to kind of help steer them out of that sooner rather than later. That's great. Now, besides your personal training and your nutrition background, what have you seen your clients do kind of after this training? What kind of, what does it kind of gift them to do or um, what kind of skill sets or what kind of accomplishments do they kind of achieve after they've learned these, these different skills? The biggest thing the, the biggest feedback that I get from folks, they will use the term, I get control of my life again, which is a really big statement, but I totally understand that that's how it feels. I think um, when you find yourself struggling with stress eating or uh, you know, food addiction of any, any addiction of any type, it really is a powerless and out of control feeling and that starts to creep its way into all aspects of your life. And the great thing about healthy lifestyle and healthy mindset in general is when you start to get one or two things under wraps and really start to get better control and be more purposeful about it, that starts to bleed into other aspects of your life pretty easily. So when you start to learn, I just happen to use exercise and nutrition as a vehicle. And when people start to get positive change in that aspect of their life, it's remarkable how many positive changes start to blossom in other aspects of their life too. It's almost as if, you know, once you learn how to get better control and, and change your mindset in one piece, then you can just do that in lots of, lots of parts of your life. So when you think about Dan's life and you're getting up every morning, what excites you so much about being a personal trainer and into sports and nutrition specialist? What's, what's, what, what motivates you to keep doing this? Because you I like to help people. You know, when, when you can see these amazing turnarounds in people's lives, whether it's how they think or how their body works or just the reports and the, and the, the notes that I get from my readers, like my email readers, my email list, or uh, comments from my articles and blogs and stuff, I really feel like I'm making a difference, and that feels good. Um, well, you know, you know, the kind of work that you're in, too. I mean, it's very gratifying to be able to help guide people to some semblance of improving themselves and some semblance of more happiness and more health, and um, it just feels great. And so uh, I would, I'd do this even if I didn't get paid. Right. That's ex exactly what I said to people. I used to get, I used to do this for free. Now I get paid for it. Within, uh, within the BrainTap universe, just so you understand, we have a weight loss series. We also have a nutrition series. We have a lot about sugar. So it's one of our top listened to. Last year we had over a half a million listenings on our app. And it's one of our top listenings. So the sugar thing is really big. I mean, people are having a real issue with it. Yeah. But do you, you find this is one of the most common things you see with your clients? Or is there other, other things that kind of pop up? If this is number one, what's two and three? Or, you know, what? I you think the, the sugar addiction thing is a symptom of the big picture that I, we talked about earlier, as far as using food as a substitute 
for something else. Or in a lot of cases, it's a distraction too. You know, that uh, is a very common thing. Sugar is a really easy distraction. If you're feeling uncomfortable somehow, you know, if you're stressed out or if you're lonely or if you're feeling bad about yourself, you're a failure, whatever self-esteem issues are going on in your mind, um, sugar is a really easy and inexpensive way to give your brain something else to do for a minute or two besides feel bad. Right. So, um, you know, and when you study addiction behavior, that distraction concept uh, happens with lots of substances, you know, with alcohol and drugs and sex and gambling and whatever your thing is. A lot of times it's just the same idea. You've got these uncomfortable feelings that are stewing and your brain desperately wants to stop thinking about that for even a couple minutes. And the downside to sugar is a it's everywhere. You know, junk food is prevalent, especially in the United States. And two, it's socially acceptable. You know, uh, if, if heroin is your thing, you can't necessarily do that at parties. Right. Well, maybe you can. I don't know what kind of parties you go to. But, <laughs> but in polite society, you know, doing drugs is not really a socially acceptable thing. But eating is very accepted and it's actually almost assumed and encouraged so um food addiction is a really easy and socially acceptable way to do it right. uh, and there's one other problem that crops up too you can stop gambling or you can stop drinking alcohol you can't stop eating you have to eat and so uh if you have food issues in general it's an extra wrench in the uh, monkey. No, it's an extra monkey wrench in the works to, yes, uh, to have food issues just because you, you can't stay away from food completely. Right. Yeah. What I found uh, my, uh, my ex-wife actually that I was married to, you know, about 30 years ago, uh, they used to have dessert parties and everybody bring their favorite dessert. I mean, can you imagine a heroin party? <laughs> everybody bring their favorite <laughs> I'm sure those exist. I, I'm not on that list. But. Yeah, I'm not on that list. But also, we do a lot with addictions. We've done it over the years. In fact, my old company, Positive Changes, was the name of it. And we actually help some smokers. And most smokers don't realize that a cigarette is 8 to 18% sugar. The addiction in the cigarette is not to nicotine. You die immediately from the nicotine from one pack of cigarettes. But you're addicted to the sugar. When you light it up, it's low-grade cocaine. So sugar's everywhere. So you're right. I mean, they, I mean, if anybody has ever smoked tobacco, uh, real tobacco, not the cigarette tobacco, uh, like they have the native Indian one, it's terrible. You wouldn't be addicted to it. It's, it tastes terrible, but they sweeten it up and they make it, you know, and even cigars are that way. So, I mean, people are, are using sugar in all sorts of different ways and getting addicted to it. So that's great. So is there, when you think about your clientele and what's going on, I know we've talked about your website and we're going to put that link into the podcast so people can go there and do it. But is there any other uh, service or product that you found really helps your, your clientele and you wish more people knew about it? I think the, a, a really good starting tool is the How to Stop Stress Eating Guidebook because it talks about the, the whole concept of putting that red flag up when you have an urge to reach for junk food and then take a few moments to just determine what it is that you're really seeking. That's how you break the cycle, that automatic cycle of uh, reaching for bad food anytime you want something or you don't want to feel bad about something. So that would probably be my uh, easiest tool and it's free. So uh, beating sugar addiction.com, just grab the how to stop stress eating guidebook. Um, that's a really good start. If you, if this kind of uh, thinking resonates with you, um, go grab that. It'll be helpful. That's great. And it fits right in with the, what we do here at BrainTap because we believe that all behaviors have an underlying positive intention, kind of what we call positive psychology, trying to, you know, nobody's wrong or broken. They've just been, re they've been trained inappropriately. <laughs> you know, so we yeah. need, and that's Perfectly why you're, yeah. you're being a trainer is, is really good for that. So when you're, when you're working with a client on their health journey, when you could, if you could pick out and actually have a factory that kicks out uh, Dan's best clients, what are they doing that makes them better than, I know that 
you probably have good success with a lot of people, but what makes your clients the best? What do you think is the attribute that you either train them to do or they come prepared to have so that the people understand what they need to do to be the best they can be to get the results you're looking for? That is a really good question, Patrick. Thank you for asking that. Um, I think the number one attribute for success is understanding that this is a process and it's a journey and you have to change how you go about things like all the time. This is not a temporary program. This is not a 21 day detox. This is not a, uh, like we talked about before, not a diet of some type that you eventually go off. We make changes in what you usually do. You know, that's a great Aristotle quote. <laughs> Uh, we are what we repeatedly do and excellence is not a trait, but a habit. That's one of my favorite quotations, whatever you do most of the time, that's what you get. So if you don't like what you're getting, you have to change what you usually do. And so the people who have the best success with the approach that I, I work with are the people who understand that going in. They're like, okay, this is not a quick fix. This is not some magic pill that I'm going to take that is going to change my life. It's like, I've got to do some work changing how I think and changing what I usually do. So that's number one. And number two is, uh, in my experience, baby steps work best. You can't change 15 or 20 things at once and expect them all to stick because we're talking about habits and lifestyle and what is normal for you. So you can only change it one or two things at a time. So um, folks who have success will be patient to understand that it's going to take a little bit of time to have this thing become normal and then the next thing become normal and then the next thing become normal. So they end up changing how they think. And that is really the, the primary thing that guides people out of trouble and into better health. You got to change what you do. And the way that you change what you do is you change how you think. Okay. So those brain tappers out there, after you download his text, you can use your brain tap to get your, your thinking to change. And maybe we'll get some other tips from you on that later so that we can start to include those in, because that's the big thing here is that uh, one of our sayings, and it's in my book, Awaken the Genius, it's called, uh, we tell people, you get what you rehearse, not what you intend. Mm -hmm. Intentions are great, but we all know that they're paved to hell. You know, the, the old saying that intentions uh, are, or no, the road to hell is paved with great intentions because they get up and then stress hits them or, or, this thing happens or that thing happens. So part of it, I think is very important. And I, and I love your statement about taking baby steps. So tell us a little bit about, without telling us their name, but tell us a little bit about a client that you took, took in and they made some incredible change with this technology. And if you want to mention a couple, that's fine too, or one, just so our, our listeners kind of understand the transformation that happens when they, when they join your, your solution. Well, I uh, have been, working with a woman who has a history of what we will call yo-yo dieting, right? Losing 40 pounds and then gaining 40 or 50 or 55 <laughs> and then losing it again and gaining it again. Because what she had been doing was actually very common. You know, people go on these binges of trying to um, overdo getting everything right. It's like a version of this all or nothing, black or white thinking, right? So they're doing nothing well for themselves and they say, okay, I'm gonna make some changes. And then they join a boot camp class to, to work out five days a week and they go on super strict dietary practices and they meditate every day and they try to get you know all the sleep and they try to be perfect in every aspect of their health and wellness. And maybe you can balance that for a few weeks or in this lady's case, she was a real willpower nut. So uh, she can do it for three or four months at a time. So she lost a ton of weight, but you just can't sustain that when you don't do it in a gradual fashion to make it normal. So then she would stop doing that. Then she would go back to what she used to do and she'd gain it all back again and feel, you know, shame and failure and all those terrible emotions that go along with that. And then she'd do the same thing with a different program or a different person. And it's just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so one of the things that she said to me recently was, you know, you finally taught me 
how to go about this improvement process so that this is just who I am now. And she has a great quote that I love very much. She said, life is messy, but I don't have to be messy in it. Oh, that's great. And I thought that was great. So yeah, that is a great, quote. A really good success story. So those people listening that say, wow, I want to do something with Dan, what's their first step for them to take to, to get involved more with your technology, your information, whatever you're doing. So tell us what it is. Uh, beatingsugaraddiction.com is my headquarters. Mm -hmm. So go to beatingsugaraddiction.com. You can drop me an email there. You can download some of the free stuff. You can read some articles, whatever you want to dive into, but that's, uh, that's how to find me. What would you say is your biggest challenge to reaching the population? Because obviously no one has found, I mean, you have a great solution and we know there are probably some other good solutions out there, but we're kind of losing the battle here in America anyway. Um, even when I go abroad now, if there's fast food, we're, they're following suit. You know, they're just kind of going along with it. What do you think the biggest challenge is right now for, for people getting this message and getting started with, with this change? Yeah, the, I think the biggest challenge is, is there's so much noise out there. You know, there, when, I, when I say noise, I mean um, so many messages about how you should be or here's the latest thing. So many shiny objects out there to distract people, you know? And so when I had talked just a few minutes ago about this whole all or nothing thing where you, you do this thing and then you go back to your old thing and then you do a different thing and then you go back to your old thing, just bouncing back and forth kind of stuff. There are so many tantalizing shiny objects out there that it's really easy for people to spend literally decades just bouncing back and forth between things, looking for some solution. And the solution is not a thing that is out there. You know, the solution is, is in your mind, how you think about what you are doing and then doing things differently on a consistent basis. That's the real solution. So um, if I had to pick one challenge, that's it right there is uh, guiding people towards the process as opposed to the shiny object. Well, this has been a great interview, and I think people, if they really listen to it, maybe listen to it again to get all your key points, you've, you've given them a lot of great things to think about. But what haven't I asked you that you want to share with the audience? Is there anything that comes to mind that you thought, wow, I really want to get this across to the BrainTap audience, or is, did we cover it all? Well, I think my big takeaway with folks is um, if you are using food to pretend that is going to give you something, or if you are using food as a distraction uh, against some negative feelings, then there is a way out of that. So hopefully we've made that clear um, throughout the course of this interview. And it, it seems like those kinds of behaviors and those kinds of mindsets are the biggest problems that I see with, uh, with the folks that I work with. That's great. Well, if you like what you heard, you'll do exactly what I did was go to beatingsugaraddiction.com. Check it out. Get that free book. And what was that book again you thought was the best, The Stress Eater's Guide? or It's called How to Stop Stress Eating. It's a free okay. little guidebook. Right. So download that book. Get started. It works right in with the brain tap. I mean, obviously, we're working with the stress, but now you're going to get some real practical tools to help make those simple changes that can transform your life. So Dan, again, thank you for being a guest on the call. I, I really enjoyed it. And I'd love to have you back on again at a later date to talk maybe about this again or some others. Cause I know you, you sound like you have just a, a fire hydrant worth of information in there waiting to come out. So I appreciate your time today. Well, you're very kind, Dr. Porter. Thank you so much for asking me to come on the show. I love the work that BrainTap is doing. It's really impressive. You guys are doing great stuff. So, so keep it up. It's helping a lot of people. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We'll get this out to the world. Let's, let's change the sugar addiction and get people back eating healthy. Thank you. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.